CoQ10 has been marketed for a variety of health benefits, but not all of them are backed by strong evidence. One popular claim is that it helps with fertility, but the real story is more complicated. For women undergoing in vitro fertilization or IVF, some research suggests CoQ10 may slightly increase pregnancy rates. A meta-analysis of small studies found that women taking CoQ10 had more than twice the odds of becoming pregnant. However, it didn't actually improve live birth rates or reduce miscarriages compared to a placebo. And if you aren't doing IVF, there's no evidence that CoQ10 improves fertility in the general population. For men, CoQ10 appear to boost certain sperm parameters like density and motility, but these improvements may not be significant enough to increase actual pregnancy rates. In other words, it might make the sperm look healthier under a microscope, but that doesn't seem to translate to more successful conceptions. Another common claim is that CoQ10 enhances athletic performance. While it's true that exercise can deplete CoQ10 levels and supplementation can restore them, clinical studies consistently show that taking CoQ10 doesn't improve aerobic capacity, strength, or perceived effort. It may help reduce oxidative stress caused by exercise, but it doesn't actually make you perform any better. Even in older adults with chronic kidney disease, CoQ10 failed to improve physical endurance compared to a placebo. What about weight loss? Some believe CoQ10 can help shed fat, but again, the research doesn't support this. A meta-analysis of clinical trials found that taking CoQ10 for up to 24 weeks had no effect on body weight or BMI. So while CoQ10 does show some benefits at the cellular level, like improving sperm movement or reducing inflammation, these effects don't often translate into meaningful real-world results, like more live births, better athletic performance, or weight loss. But does CoQ10 have proven benefits for any medical conditions? Absolutely. Let's take a look at what it actually works for. CoQ10 may be beneficial for certain heart conditions thanks to its protective effects on the heart muscle and blood vessels. In patients with congestive heart failure or CHF, research consistently shows that taking CoQ10 daily can improve heart function, reduce hospitalizations, and even lower the risk of death. It may also help decrease the likelihood of developing irregular heartbeats in people with CHF. In children with abnormally enlarged hearts, taking CoQ10 for up to 9 months has shown some improvement in heart function. CoQ10 may also help protect the heart after injury. In patients who recently have had a heart attack, one small study found that starting CoQ10 within 3 days significantly reduced the risk of future heart attacks. Similarly, taking CoQ10 for 1-2 to two weeks before cardiac bypass or vascular surgery appeared to reduce the damage caused by low oxygen levels during the procedure. In patients with angina, taking CoQ10 3 times a day for 4 weeks slightly improved exercise tolerance. For people with PCOS, CoQ10 may offer some benefits. A meta-analysis of clinical trials found that it modestly improved blood sugar control, cholesterol levels, and certain sex hormones compared to a placebo. Another small study suggested that taking 100 mg of CoQ10 daily for 12 weeks could slightly reduce excessive hair growth and improve mood. CoQ10 might help lower blood pressure, though the effects are modest. Studies show that taking 100 to 900 mg daily, either alone or alongside conventional medications, can significantly lower systolic blood pressure, but it doesn't seem to have much effect on diastolic blood pressure. Some research suggests that CoQ10 may have a small positive impact on cholesterol. A meta-analysis of 50 clinical trials found that taking 100 to 500 mg daily slightly improved lipid levels in healthy adults. However, for people with metabolic conditions like diabetes, CoQ10 hasn't been shown to significantly improve cholesterol levels. CoQ10 may also provide relief for certain musculoskeletal or MSK issues. In fibromyalgia, studies show that taking CoQ10 daily for a few months may help reduce pain and fatigue. For multiple sclerosis or MS, research suggests that a 3-month regimen of CoQ10 can decrease fatigue and depression. 
In patients with muscular dystrophy, CoQ10 supplementation has been linked to improved physical performance. For those taking statins, a medication for high cholesterol, CoQ10 may help reduce muscle-related side effects. Some studies suggest that taking it daily for three months can alleviate muscle weakness, pain, cramps, and fatigue in people experiencing statin-induced muscle issues. Overall, CoQ10 has a solid reputation for supporting heart health, particularly with those with conditions like congestive heart failure or individuals recovering from a heart attack or surgery. It may also offer some benefits for people with PCOS by helping with hormone balance. When it comes to MSK conditions, CoQ10 has shown some potential in reducing fatigue and possibly improving movement, though the evidence in this area isn't as strong. For fertility, while CoQ10 appears to provide some cellular benefits, these improvements don't seem to translate into better real-world outcomes, such as higher birth rates. As for athletic performance, unless you have a specific MSK condition like multiple sclerosis or muscular dystrophy, CoQ10 doesn't appear to provide any meaningful advantage. Coenzyme Q10, or CoQ10, is a fat-soluble compound with a structure similar to vitamin K. It exists in two forms, the oxidized form, ubiquinone, and the reduced form, or ubiquinol, both of which are available as supplements. Many supplement companies market ubiquinol as the superior form, claiming it's the active version of CoQ10 and is better absorbed by the body. But this claim is misleading. In reality, your body body can freely convert between ubiquinone and ubiquinol as needed. One is not inherently better absorbed than the other. What actually improves absorption is how the supplement is formulated. Emulsified preparations and oil suspensions tend to be absorbed better than soft gels, dry tablets, or powdered filled capsules. As for whether ubiquinol is more effective than ubiquinone, research doesn't support this idea. In fact, a review comparing the two forms found that long-term benefits for heart health, such as reduced cardiovascular mortality, were observed primarily in studies using ubiquinone, not ubiquinol. However, this is likely because most CoQ10 studies have used the more affordable ubiquinone form rather than the pricier ubiquinol version. The bottom line is that there is no solid evidence that ubiquinol is better than ubiquinone. They're both likely going to work the same for you. And if you're considering CoQ10 supplements, the regular, more affordable ubiquinone form will work just fine. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. Do you use CoQ10 and what are your experiences? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and leave me a like. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date and share this video with someone you know who can use the info.